Uh, the other reality is that Omicron is a, is a different beast. Uh, and so even those who were fully vaccinated uh, are, uh, have been getting COVID, have been getting breakthrough cases. Uh, 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 but it redu it, it, you're less likely than if you're unvaccinated, but, but still we're, uh, we're seeing a significant number of breakthrough cases with Omicron. If you are boosted, uh, it reduces your chances of getting it by about 70%. So still very significant. Uh, and in terms of hospitalizations and deaths, you're talking about reductions in the range of 80 to 90 to 95%. And uh, perhaps we can let Dr. Rashidian speak to what types of patients he is seeing, uh, seeing in, in the hospital. Uh, you know, the vaccines are a key part of, uh, of how we, uh, we prevent this. And the other reality with Omicron is it's incredibly infectious. So as, you, as again, as uh, Steve, what happened with Steve is, 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 a, is a good illustration. Uh, it is one of the most infectious diseases we have ever encountered. Uh, so if you're in a gathering uh, you're, uh, and someone has COVID, it's very likely to get spread, which has a lot of implications. Uh, and you know we've we've been battling this for so long, and all of us just want to put it in the in our in our rearview mirror. Uh, but right now we got to get through this with Omicron. And uh, and uh, you know I've been working a lot with the schools, and so the, and uh, so schools uh, our K through 12 uh, students are going back. Uh, and there are certain to be cases, uh, and so we're working closely with the schools to to uh, uh, to best address that. Uh, the key message I would give to our our parents and our families is if you, if your child is sick, do not send them to school. That is the key the key point. Uh, and the other is to wear a good, well fitting mask. So uh, you know it's in the in the past the, the messaging was about masking generally. Uh, masks are effective, but you know, 40 to 50% for the cloth mask. But if you use a, a, a well-fitting mask like KN95, which are much more readily available now, uh, it reduces your chance of getting COVID, but also of spreading it to others uh, closer to 95%. The bottom line is, you know, we all know of cases where someone who was vaccinated who got sick, someone who was unvaccinated didn't get sick. Uh, but if you look at the stats, you look at the odds, you're much less likely to get COVID if you've been vaccinated you're much less likely to be in the hospital and you're much less likely to die. Uh, so those are, and, and particularly for those who are in the higher risk groups. Uh, for our children, uh, it's true that they don't get sick as much, but they do get sick. Uh, and uh, over 500 kids have died from COVID uh, uh, in the United States. There's also something called multi-inflammatory syndrome. Over 5,000 uh, kids have gotten that. Uh, uh, and you compare it to some of the other diseases that we just accept that we should be vaccinating, like measles. So if you look at what uh, the rates of deaths and, and cases from measles uh, before we had vaccines, about 500 people died a year from measles. Well, now, now we, we just accept that we're going to vaccinate for that. And here we have another infectious disease, uh, much more infectious, uh, in, uh, uh, similar to measles, actually, in terms of infectivity. Uh, and, uh, and we've got a, a, lot of, a lot of resistance. Uh, to me, you know, when I, when I think about schools and, and, and getting back to some sense of normalcy, you know, we're committed to having our kids in school it's, uh, for their emotional well-being, their psychological well-being, uh, for their uh, academic success, uh, and for our society to function. We want to have our schools open. So we got to give our schools the best possible chance. So we do that by, by getting our kids vaccinated uh, and, and having them continue to wear a mask. I think the best way to take the politics out of this whole equation is say, okay, fine, you know what? We're not going to support government mandates for people to get vaccines. You can make that choice. But there are consequences with that choice. And that's something that you're going to have to bear. So my concern is this. So the comment made, well, people aren't getting sick. People aren't dying. We know a lot more now than two years ago. And the fact is people are more aware of COVID. They're wearing masks. They're being more hygienic. They're being more careful. I'm sure flu rates have gone down too because of people wearing masks. But the vaccine being a tool actually helps people not to die. That's why the 97% of people in the ICU that are dying didn't have a vaccine. And with a vaccine, you can still transmit COVID. There's no question about that. I don't think it's ever been a question. It's just a matter of your body being able to cope with this treatment. But I want to ask our, our, our doctors about something. Why do you think that we have the, in raw numbers, that people may question, the numbers, but in raw numbers, we have the highest number of COVID cases in the world. And we have the highest number by far of deaths in raw numbers in the world in the most advanced country in the, on this planet. And I'm just trying to understand, like all of us know someone that probably died, died or has a loved one died of COVID. Um, we're all about a quarter of a percent of the population have died from COVID. So, I mean, imagine average elementary school, 400 students in this country, 
one of them dies. That's that's how many people are dying. It's a tragic thing. Yet if it's COVID, it's political, so no one cares. Why are people dying in this country versus other countries? What's going on? Let's go to Dr. Rashidian. Okay, well, thank you so much for having me uh, and Happy New Year to our audience and um, our panelists. And I wish a very healthy year for all of us. Um, so as far as uh, I'll just address uh, Mr. Carbosi's uh, question regarding um, why uh, we have a higher mortality, why the patients uh, you know, die more in this country. And that comes to risk factors. Um, when we see hospitalized patient, most, most of them, they have, have one, two, three risk factors at the minimum. Um, morbid obesity or even obesity is uh, thought to be number one risk factors for hospitalization and for death. Uh, in the past, we thought hypertension and diabetes and so forth are number one, but now morbid obesity, diabetes, hypertension, and so forth. Um, that's why our mortality seems to be higher, at least based on data that we get. There are some countries, I bet that we don't have accurate data about that. So I can't speak on that. Um, as far as uh, why we have a higher number of cases here, um, it's difficult to say because there's a lot of co-founding factors that goes into that question. But I would say compliance, um, compliance, uh, and that's my personal experience. I went to Canada about eight weeks ago or so to visit my family. In Canada, they won't let you go into any restaurant, any cafe or whatnot without having vaccination card. Everybody wears a mask and so forth. So that might be a reason. I don't know because of the co-founding effect. Um, for that question. So that's, uh, that's what I think. Um, as far as the other questions that was brought up regarding treatment and Omicron and vaccine durability, I'll try to touch on them very quick so I don't, I respect everybody's time. As far as Omicron, um, the reason that Omicron is more infectious or is more virulent, if you will, is because of the number of mutation that it has. Um, Omicron has uh, been shown to have 50 mu uh, mutation, 5-0, compared to the wild type, the original COVID that was discovered uh, from Wuhan. From those 50 mutation, 30 of them are on a part of the virus that attaches to the cells. So you can imagine, you can give the vaccine to someone, but if there is mutation on the part of the virus that attached to the cells, that vaccine will not be as effective. The way I look at the vaccine and the virus, I look at them with the analogy of having a lock and a key. Key being your vaccine and lock being the virus. Um, if you have the key, you can lock the door, you can lock it and there's not gonna be any movement in and out. So if you have the vaccine that, that key fits it, uh, meaning without mutation, then the vaccine goes in there, it locks the virus, and the virus does not attach to the cells as much as it would without that vaccine. So unfortunately, with the mutation, that vaccine is nowhere near as effective as it was for the wild type, which is the original one. Um, as far as the durability of the vaccine, the studies that they have came out out of Israel, most of our studies are coming, the, you know, the upfront one. It shows that after six months, the durability goes down drastically, meaning um, the amount of antibody that we have in our body, is on, in our serum, is not as much as it used to be before six months ago. So currently, the data is, and the recommendation is, to get a booster after six months of your second dose, okay? And that has shown, at least based on the limited early on data, that has shown that it will decrease the hospitalization, it will decrease how sick you get, and so forth.